Where did all that come from? Somebody must be playing tricks on me. I don't talk like that. I don't talk dog language or sheep language or bird language. I speak human language. Humphrey, what about you? What do you speak? <laughs> ah, yes, you speak monkey language, don't you? Probably some other monkey might understand you, too. We say that monkeys communicate. That is, they're able to let another animal know what they mean by making sounds and by the things that they do. But he doesn't let someone else know what he wants by talking in words the way you do. He can't. He can let me know that what he wants is food, but he can't say in words, I like bananas, and I'll eat what you give me. But honestly, teacher, I really would rather try a banana split for a change. I'd faint if he said that. Just making sounds is not what we call talking, is it? By talking, what we mean are those thousands of special sounds that we humans make called words. Do you think that any other animals talk in words the way we do? A parrot? Well, not really. A trained parrot can repeat the sounds that he hears others say. You can repeat words, too. But you can go a million miles beyond that when you talk. You can talk about the future and the past and about things you can't even see or touch. You can talk about when George Washington was the first president of the United States. And you can talk about someday when men might go to Mars. And you can talk about how you feel and how you think. No other animal can do that. Why not? Let's see if we can find out. How do you talk? What do you talk with? Yes, you talk with your mouth and your tongue and your lips. And where does the sound come from? Do this. Mm -hmm. That's right, it comes from your voice box or your larynx. So, you talk with your voice box and where do the ideas that make you want to talk come from? Right, from your brain. So you talk with your voice box and your brain. Well, it's the same thing with monkeys and baboons and chimps. Then why can't they learn to talk the way you do? They can't learn to talk the way you do because their brains are not like yours. They don't have the same nerve network in your, their brain that you have in yours. Their brain isn't as complicated as yours. It's the nerve network in your brain and the way it's put together that makes speech possible. That's why you can talk. And that's why human animals are sometimes called the talking animal. But do you think that human animals have always been able to talk? Do you think they've always been able to communicate in words the way we do now? Well. Probably they've always been able to communicate in sounds the way other animals do. But nobody knows for sure just when people first began to talk in words. Scientists say it took a long, long time for the human animal to invent a language so that he could share thoughts and ideas with other humans. There must have been many times in those long ago days 
when talking would have been helpful. After all, those were dangerous times. Suppose you were at home in a cave and an animal tried to get in. Well, your father would probably push you to the back of the cave and make noises that meant there's danger nearby. But he wouldn't be able to say, since he didn't have language, watch out, there's a bear trying to get in. Hide in the darkest corner up on the ledge while I try and scare him away. So see, being able to talk would have been helpful. And that's why early man invented language, because he needed it. If he hadn't invented language, we might all be living like cave people today. Now there's something to think about. How about you? Have you always been able to talk so that everybody understood you? <laughs> no, you haven't. Certainly not. Once, when you were brand new, all you did was cry. <coughs> and that's what you did. Crying was the only way that you could let others know that you needed something. But later, when you were a little older, you began to make happy, bubbly, gurgly sounds. You watched and listened and made sounds for about a year. And then one day it happened. You said your first word. Maybe it was dada or ka or no or whatever it was. Everyone was so excited because you were beginning to talk. Do you know what your first word was? If you know it, say it for me now. Oh, good. Well, whatever your first word was, you soon began putting words together, like baby go ka or mama, give me cookie. Even at that early age and with just a few words, you made sense. You made more sense than this. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the bora groves and the momraths out grave. That's just part of a poem a famous writer once wrote for fun, all in silly talk. Do you talk silly talk sometimes? I thought so. But you don't do that all the time. Mostly you use sensible words and you talk in sensible sentences. In fact, you talk Talk, talk. You do talk a lot, don't you? Everybody does. Try to imagine spending a whole day without talking. It wouldn't be easy, would it? And since everybody talks so much, why do they? Let's see. Do you talk because you need to ask questions? Yes, you do. Do you talk because you want to tell somebody what you want? Yes, you do that. Um, to tell how you feel? Mm -hmm. To complain? To tell secrets? To make promises? Yes, you talk for all these reasons and for many more besides. Talking is the easiest, fastest, cheapest way of letting someone else know what you want them to know. Suppose I didn't talk to you. What would you think if I did this? <laughs> now, wouldn't that be weird? Weird, yes. And it would be a waste of your time and mine. How could you learn anything if I didn't try to explain things by talking. You wouldn't, would you? And since you talk so much, we must know a lot of words. I know you don't know as many words as are in my dictionary. There's about 100,000 words in here, and I certainly don't know them all. How many do you think you know? Probably about 3,000 and you're learning more new words every day. That's a lot, 3,000 words. And just think, once you didn't even know any. Oh, what's that? Who 
Hello. Come in. Come in. Hola, me llamo Jacqueline. Toqué en su puerta para saber si te gustaría comprar galletas de Girl Scout. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Oh, that's too bad. I, what I said was, my name is Jacqueline. I want, I knocked on your door because I wanted to know if you wanted to buy some Girl Scout cookies. <gasps> Girl Scout cookies? Ah, I love them. Sure, I'd like to buy some. Ah, how do you say two boxes of cookies, please, in Spanish? Dos cajas de galletas, por favor. Ooh, dos cajas de galletas, por favor. Right. Thank you. Gracias. Ah, gracias. Adios. Adios. Oh, adios. Thank you. Now, isn't that interesting? There's someone who speaks more than one language. Jacqueline speaks both English and Spanish. Now, why do you suppose she speaks Spanish? Yes, because her parents spoke Spanish. And that's the sound and those are the words that she heard when she was a baby. If they spoke Chinese, she would have learned Chinese. And if your parents spoke Spanish, you'd know Spanish too. Whatever language people speak, all people talk, and not everyone speaks English. There are hundreds of languages spoken all over the world. Wherever you find people, you find language. Suppose you lived in Greece, and you wore a cap like this. When you said goodbye, you'd say, adio, and maybe blow a kiss. Or if you lived in France, and many Frenchmen do, you touch your cap like this, chérie, and say, bonsoir, adieu. Or if you were a Hollander, you'd really be in Dutch. If you forgot to bow and say, Hivasti, and thank you very much. Suppose you had to wear a fez like this upon your head, and you forgot to say, Alazi Maladik, and said hello instead. And now it's time for me to say goodbye for now to you. So, Adio. Hivasti. And until next time, au revoir. Adieu. All About You is a project of the Agency for Instructional Television.